appreciate that a lot of our listeners at home have lives and therefore maybe didn't see Razzy Erasmus's couple of tweets after that game, uh, highlighting a couple of contentious incidents, as Razzy tends to do with the copy of his tweets laced with sarcasm and maybe an element of faux humility as well. Owen, if you were part of his coaching staff, would you enjoy um, this tactical ploy of his to build a sort of siege mentality to highlight the fallibility of officials across the world? Or would you be kind of thinking, shut the fuck up and just let us get on with it? Yeah, wearing thin, I was actually thinking this even from a playing perspective. I've talked to a few South African coaches as well that it's, it's not actually going well in South Africa. Obviously, it was a, a masterstroke in the Lions series, uh, the pressure he was able, able to apply on Nick, per- uh, Nick Berry particularly. Um, yeah, I don't like it. I was actually just thinking, I hope we have Matthew Reynal as a referee when we play South Africa in the World Cup because mm-hmm. there is a man with a massive ego that will be watching Razi Razzers and tell you, I'll show you. Um, so that would be a great referee selection for us. But yeah, like he's just got to get on with things, isn't it? Imagine if every professional coach went public with all their their gripes with refereeing decisions, Birch has been on that side of the fence as well. Like you, you go through the process, you go t- through the right channels, making it public is just making a fool of yourself, in my opinion, and just move on. And I think he's he's creating a rod for his teams back, to be honest with you. And I think if they have Wayne Barnes again in a high profile game, he's not going to forget that either. Another referee with a big ego. Um, and I think I think the ploy worked once, it's not going to work again. Yeah, there's a lot of diminishing returns with a, a little bit, Birch. I wonder to what extent is this actually part of an overall plan to pressurize officials and to what extent he's just addicted to the instant gratification of Twitter notifications and a little bit of support from home. Like there may be no nuance to this at all. He may be just sort of taking the piss and enjoying himself at this point. Yeah, it is. I, I'd love to know what World Rugby can, can do about it. Obviously, the way he writes the tweets... <laughs> It's not directly critical. <laughs> he's, he's probably got legal advice how he words it, but look, it's it's uh, it's become uh, it's become annoying. Um, look, we all, uh, you know, if you've been involved in in, in coaching and, and have a, have the facility to analyze games and send clips, we know there's a huge amount of errors. And uh, Paul Williams, uh, who I follow on Twitter, he said, "Oh, the game has never been better refereed," and uh, it's just that there's so much. Um, it's so difficult to referee now and there's so much focus. And I probably, I do agree with him. I, I do agree with him. Like Wayne Barnes is caught in a situation where does he let things flow or does he? I think Razzie's, all Razzie's points in, on the video are most of them are, are actually legitimate. Like the, the one where Fiku comes through and, and jumps on on um, on Faf and then comes back off. Like they're all things that you could have a gripe about. But the, the reality is, you know, most, most coaches, when they, or for me anyway, I think if it wasn't more than twenty errors, you didn't feel hard done by. You know what I mean? Um, and you accepted that that's that's the level of errors you're going to have. But Razi, I don't know what is. Is it a master plan? Is it is it fool's gold? Is it ego an egomaniac? I just don't know. Um, I, I look. I think it has to stop. I think it has to stop. And I think probably you need Saru to stop it. You know what I mean? They just need to say, look at. You know, we we understand, we, we um, but it has to stop now. You've served your ban, you've come back. Um, he's I don't know if you saw the halftime footage. You know, he was the one leading in the dressing room. He's he's still very much hands on. Um, and I, I think from a playing point of view, I, I I think it's a distraction really. I think they just need to uh, they need to get on with it. But he's not doing himself any harm. I like Razzy. I find him a fascinating character. Um, always very interesting man to meet. He knows the game very well, charismatic, but this isn't, yeah, this is just going on too much now and, and he just needs to get over it. Mm. Because he will still have supporters in South Africa, Murray, and a lot of South mm-hmm. African rugby fans mm-hmm. do have a persecution complex to begin with. He may be one of them where he just feels the reps are out to get us from the outset. But then like we're getting questions in the members WhatsApp group, one from Mick, is Razzie bad for rugby? And while a lot of people wouldn't necessarily feel that he is, to some people, it is creating this perception or almost a, a stink, if you like, around South African rugby that he's at the helm of it. And to um, to a point, he's bringing the game into disrepute, which, I don't know, perception can become reality as well, where 
that's not necessarily a healthy thing to have associated with your group of players or with your country's rugby output, so to speak. Is he is he good for the game? Is he bad for the game? I think he's good for the game because he's creating talking points here um, and maybe in the wrong way like Mick's taking the time to put that question into members WhatsApp group he's clearly engaged with the issue and maybe frustrated and disappointed with it I think the Nick Berry stuff for me was pretty disgusting over the summer there was quite a bit of insinuation in there and it was quite vehement I, I thought that was over the line this stuff like I just it just looks like a classic Twitter troll um, and if I'm to rate his trolling, I'd say the language is superb, as Birch mentioned there. Like, he, they can't get him on any of that. I don't think his, his selection of clips is very good, to be honest. There's a four pass in there, and you're thinking, Razzie, like, that's an awful clip to use. He could, he could def- you could definitely go back and, and pick out loads of bit of South African play where they, they get away with it. And, and that's rugby, and, and that's just the sport. And, and, like, you've got to accept almost that there are going to be decisions that don't go your way. The rest can't absolutely pick up everything. I think... It'd be fascinating to see Galtier do the same the same back. Um, so yeah, sometimes you're better off just ignoring trolls completely. You can't do it in this case. As to the point of his is, I suppose the the aura around him. He's just got a new documentary out. I haven't seen it yet, but I've no doubt that that's going to paint him in a brilliant light. Um, and indeed, he's does loads of loads of brilliant things. He's obviously masterminded that amazing World Cup success. I do think he's probably feeling and my sense is that he's feeling a little bit of pressure even if you think about the time he took to to do these clips and to put them on social media it's not insignificant as someone who posts a lot on social media it's it's just not insignificant and, and is he actually using his his time in the right way when they're under a bit of pressure when clearly they're i don't know i think there's a little bit of wavering in in what they see as their identity even the, the slight shifting game plan and some of the selection um and as i say i think they'll come right for for a world cup but on the whole like I've just enjoyed this few minutes to chat about him. And as long as it doesn't spill into the Nick Berry kind of stuff where it's really personal. And uh, yeah, I think that was over the board in, in what he was suggesting around how he dealt with C. Khaleesi, et cetera. Um, I think it's just part of professional sport. We see it every single weekend in, in the Premier League and in football. The coaches moaning about referees is, is not, not new by any means. And as Owen alludes to, a lot of the referees have strong personalities and they'd expect some of this. And, and yeah, maybe it's out in the open a little bit more than they'd, they'd like, but I have to say it makes for fun and games for the rest of us.